as I said before, sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I think we're ready now. So as you've already heard, NEOS 3 and Flow 4 are released. And just to give you a short overview, before we start, who is working with NEOS and Flow right now in here, just so I know where we can take off, okay. And who knows NEOS and Flow somehow? Okay. Okay, so the talk will not be too interesting for you because it's, it's not too much of an introduction to the news and flow project itself, but more a guide for developers how to deal with the new version and the new major release. All right, I will just quickly fly through this because you already heard about it. It's the news namespace change. So we took out all the type of free parts from the uh, use statements and all the other stuff where it um, showed up. Uh, TypoScript 2 is now called Fusion. We have PHP 7.1 uh, support, and this PHP uh, version will also be supported in 2.3 in the near future. And we changed to BSR4 since it's the best BSR there is. Standalone Fluid is a big part of the new change because before we had some sort of fluidish adaption to the actual type of free fluid. And this is the real type of free fluid, so we don't have to clone all the features that the type of free fluid had. And it's now the, the official standalone version. But there are some tricky changes that come with that, but I will talk about this shortly. Then, as you already heard, this, the media package is now standalone. That was a pretty pain in the ass to get it out of the core. But it's now a separated core package, so it's easier for you to integrate your own media library if you want to. And yeah, there's another note about the, the news content repository. That's not too much of a change. It's just the name changed. So from type of free CR to news content repository. So you don't get confused when you read something about this. And as you already heard, there's a new React-based news backend experimental feature if you want to try it out. So let's jump into the upgrade instructions. Uh, there's a nice step-by-step -step guide on the website currently. Unfortunately, I noticed today that we're still missing the uh, official release notes on the read the docs. So the latest release notes are from 2.3, I think. That's uh, pretty bad, I think, because the version is out since almost a month and we're working on fixing that. And yeah, how many of you have already upgraded to NEOS 3 or Flow 4? Okay, three guys. And did you also upgrade all your uh, packages in your repositories as well? Yeah. All your packages? Nice. One. Okay, <laughs> that's all your packages. One package that is important. Okay, the important ones, that's cool. So, um, because what I will be talking about in a minute is also a few tips how you, and tips and tricks how you can get your current packages up to speed with the new news and flow versions. So, as I already told you, there's a, a pretty neat step-by-step -step guide. This is actually for upgrading your whole website. So, if you just follow these steps, you should, be, you should do, do pretty good. There's a few things that aren't on this page that should be a little bit more prominent. And actually it's two things, and we will fix that as well on the weekend or at the starting next week. So as you can see right here at the bottom, there are two list points telling you that something changed in Fluid and there's some sort of breaking changes that you should be aware of. The problem currently is, if you look into this, it guides you to open issues but most of this, those issues are already closed, but that does not mean that you don't have to do something. So that's, that, that's really fresh. I noticed that in the drain um, when I came here. So uh, we're already aware of that. And the second thing is, so um, right here at the top, it says something optional step. Well, it's not that optional in my eyes. Uh, you should adjust the... Um, no, actually, that's not what I'm talking about. It's, uh, this is just uh, the place where your packages are saved, so type of free flow, plugin. But there's another thing in your composer you should be aware of, because all your requirements, if you required like uh, type of free NEOS or type of free flow before in your personal package, then 
you'll be in big trouble now because if you don't change that to NEOS, NEOS and NEOS flow, what will happen is that the package order gets mixed because every time you change something in your settings and you're trying to overrule some sort of core package, the order is very important because the core package has to be loaded before your personal package, otherwise you can't overwrite stuff. So if you're not obeying this and just really quick smoke testing your site, everything probably looks good, but some configuration will probably be missing. And in the worst case scenario, you won't notice that at first, or you will um, look for the actual issue somewhere completely elsewhere. So if you take a quick look at the latest Composer JSON in master, you can see that here the package name is Neos Flow. And if you take a look back at 2.3, it's still type of reflow. It will work because there's an alias on the package repository. But as I said before, it will mix up your uh, package loading order. And this is something really important because it probably won't even break. It's just something you don't notice at first. And you will look for the uh, possible solution probably somewhere completely different. I spent like one and a half hours until I found out that the composer JSON was, the package was aliased on the repository, but the package order mechanism does not obey any all aliases. So watch out for that. And we will also put that in the notes. And the second important thing is, as I showed you before, there's this issue list, which is pretty incomplete by now because most of the issues are already fixed. But one of the most important problems you will run into if you use the new fluid is the behavior change in the abstract condition view helper. So if you have some custom view helper that relies on, on this uh, interface, you will run into issues because on your, when you just smoke test it and you look at it, it will look all right. Because before it's cached, everything is good. But on the second request, all your conditions might flip. So everything that was, uh, because the ten and else blocks are mixed. And there's just one, if you, if you just obey the solution we have for you, everything will be all right, but you, you have to know it so you don't run into trouble. So we have uh, updated the doc block on the abstract condition view helper. Let me see, ah, here it is. So here's what we did. We changed this doc block to the new method how you should do it because as you can see before, um, it was enough to implement your own render method, but what you now have to do is to implement your own evaluate condition method. That's nothing we have complete control of because as you heard before, we are now using the independent fluid standalone package. So we are not actually maintaining that. We are, it's some sort of cooperation, but uh, some things might have changed that are not really in our control. So. As said before, those are two really important things, and this is probably one of the most important fluid thingy because most of the other stuff will probably break your site, and that's good because you know you have to do something. This might not break your site. It might, might just change the behavior of your site, and this is something you might even not notice for a week or even longer until the customer finds out that something is fishy, and you will... Uh, probably spend a lot of time looking for the actual issue before you find out that you're using the abstract condition view helper wrong. Yeah, that's pretty much it from my tips and tricks for the upgrades. Um, talking about uh, your own packages, we wrote a lot of migrations. So my personal experience was that the transition for all my packages from two Point three to three point zero or three to four, if you're talking about flow, was pretty smooth. So mostly it's enough just to apply the core migrations, and everything will work out of the box if you obey my tip from before to check your composer JSON. <laughs> yeah, so we got you covered. Um, and if you follow these steps here for a list of changes, 
you can see uh, that most of the stuff you see here is nothing you have to do by hand. So all these namespace changes I talked before that were where all this type of free stuff comes out and the, the new stuff comes in, that's nothing you have to think about. Usually it's, it's enough to just run the code migration and check the changes afterwards. But it's important to have all your um, packages in a Git repository, of course, because the migrations are nothing less than uh, Git commits into that repository. And so you can look through every change and see if everything works all right. But as I said before, my experience is pretty positive if you uh, keep in mind a few important changes. Get to the questions part. Any questions, any problems you ran into? Upgrading your package, probably. Um, what was the abstract view helper again? What was it called? I think I, I called it the wrong name before. It's the abstract condition view helper. So this is something like the if view helper in Fluid. And if you need your own customized condition view helper, so if you have some special sort of conditions and yeah, that's a good question, actually, probably I didn't show it really before, because it's usually something like you have a condition on the top, then there is a then block, something that should happen if the condition is true, or an else block if the condition is false. That's a after condition. condition. Yeah, that's what happens, because like you can see here in the issue, the expected behavior would be the then, but it's actually the else. So this is... Other questions, news questions or release questions? Is the stable choice for the future? Or it's, the it's the stable choice for the future because um, our news fluid went pretty stale, if you want so, because um, using the, the standalone version gives us a lot of more community power because if, the, if, the, if something, some bug shows up, it's not only up to us to fix it, because we can work on the bug ourselves if we want to, but if all our resources are not available, there's also other people who work on the standalone as well. And it's actually easier for guys coming from Typo3, changing Neos, because everything will be pretty much the same. Talking about Fluid, I said pretty much the same, because there's, of course, some differences as well. But it, it also comes with some perks like new features. Until now, it wasn't even possible to chain uh, different conditions in a conditional view helper, talking about that again. Uh, but now it's even possible. And that, that was something when I started working with Neos and I used Fluid a lot back then. Uh, it was like, that, this, they can't be for real. I cannot chain two conditions. Like even very simple stuff like saying not something. Like you can do the bash. Yeah, that, that should work as well, yeah. Yeah, it's a type of screen Yeah. Yeah. So you said before you want to be a core developer. That's actually not that hard, if you look at me. You need time for that. Yeah, that's, the, <laughs> that's right. That's the most important resource you need to actually do it because basically it's enough to, to, to really dive into the project and spend yeah, you will have to spend a lot of time <laughs> to understand most things, how they work, but it just comes naturally because when you start uh, working with these other guys, you get better pretty fast because just reviewing the stuff they do makes you better each time because at first you just get the gist of it, what they're doing, and the second or third time around, you already really know what they're doing now because, yeah, or you ran into some sort of issue related to that and you work on it yourself, you get a much better understanding of what is going on in the background. And this way, it really benefits in, in various ways because you can, you get better at your, your job at the company because you have much deeper insights of all this stuff and why it works at, or how it is for different reasons. And... Um, yeah, but you already got it. It's most important thing is time. And it's really time consuming. So just uh, doing some reviews every evening can, can really consume much time. And if you, everybody has some sort of little project going on. 
So some guys are working on this CQRS stuff. You already mentioned that. And uh, the others are working on the new UI. And so everybody picks something he wants to work on. And yeah, that's mostly, for me at least, in the free time because you cannot uh, spend all your company working time on, on those new features, even if I would want that to happen because that would be cool, eight hours or 10 hours a day just doing Neos programming. What would be the most important feature or upgrade you would need in the near future? Well, I would love to see the, the UI thingy coming together. I mean, it's, I talked to Dimitri uh, at the sprint and he, he gave me some estimation of about 70% completion. That, would, that sounds like a lot to me now. But if you can, if we can get that last 30%, that would be great. And everybody is invited to work on that because I also see new people coming into the project because of this new UI rewrite because nowadays a lot of people are interested in React and that's some really advanced React stuff going on there. So if anybody of you is interested in doing things in React or wanting to learn React, you can already, and you, do, you think, wow, I don't have a project. Yeah, do the, <laughs> do the rewrite for us. <laughs> no, it's, it's probably not the very best thing to start from scratch. You should get some basic knowledge about React and Redux, but it's, when you, there's also little components you can start working on. You don't have to jump into this really complicated, big, messy stuff. You can also start with some, you see something in the backend which is missing right now, and you know how it should work because the behavior is there from the old UI, and so you can just try to rebuild it. And that's some, some pretty neat examples in my eyes to just start working on it because everything is so modularized and in each own components it's perfectly possible to just work on one single component. And those guys are very, very happy, uh, happy to help you because like Sebastian, he's one of the most helpful guys I know because if you, yeah, <laughs> there was a thumbs up in the audience. Uh, if you need something from him, he will, you can write him a private message or something and he's really happy to help. And that, that, this goes actually for all Neos core developers and community members because it's a really, in my eyes, a really kind and really helpful community. This is how, I, when I came first, when I had the first contact with the community, it was like, wow, those are the most polite guys I've seen on the web till today. Like Christian Müller, he's so patient and kind. Never seen that before. Hi, Christian. <laughs> So that's about it.